pleasure Hi. to be with you. Good to talk to you too. Um, I gotta, so we're, and we're mainly discussing on God by. Mm -hmm. What a touchy story. Uh, um, were you able to watch the film? Yes, of course. I watched it. And it was, it's just, it was one of those films where, I mean, I am, I kind of, I saw a lot of the frustration actually grow up with my own parents. Oh, like really? they have both. So a lot of things I was just kind of like, wow, I, I can relate. I mean, I was brought here when I was seven. So yeah. you now you get to see a lot of the adapting um, to a whole new, a, a new country, new world. Yeah. So yeah. I was, I was born here, but um, almost two weeks or three weeks, as soon as I was able to fly, we moved back to Costa Rica. And then I didn't come back to the, to the United States until I was five or six. So it was almost like the same kind of thing. Technically, I was born here, but coming back and sort of assimilating and learning English and all of that stuff too was, yeah, very similar for me. Very similar. So, but congratulations because you did have, guys have, did have a chance to do like a usual red, you know, now it's an HBO, but yeah. when they came out, it was featured in a, at the, um, what was it, New York Latin Film Festival? Festival? Yeah. Yeah, and HBO actually sponsors that film festival, and they're getting ready to to gear up again. I don't know how they're doing it, if they're doing it digitally. I think some festivals have been doing it sort of online, but um, they're getting ready to go again. So, yeah, we did get to premiere it in a theater, and um, we got to share it with our family and our friends, and it was really, really great. Awesome experience. Really, really great. Well, let's talk about your character. Let's talk yeah. about Anna. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it that mainly attracted you? The one thing, I mean, I'm, it's, it's a great story, lovely story yeah. to, for people to watch, but what was it about the story that attracted you? And, and yeah. So we started, um, Andrew and I were working together on a documentary. Andrew was the director. Um, we had been working on a documentary uh, series just almost immediately after the last presidential election where where we were both kind of trying to figure out like what do we do creatively right now in this space what kind of stories do we want to tell and he wanted to tell stories that sort of humanized a lot of the headlines so going in and actually speaking to people that are are you know that are living in these spaces and and just seeing the commonality we're all parents we all want the same things we're all human beings that have the same dreams and hopes and desires and as we started working on that we started talking to a couple dreamers that were kind of one was this girl indira she's incredible she wanted to be a doctor and she couldn't she didn't qualify for financial aid but her local town they all just kind of rallied around her and raised enough money for her to kind of go to college. And, and now she's actually finished and she's headed to medical school. She actually did get into medical school. So that kind of started the conversation of, you know, um, all these questions were coming up about, you know, legal, illegal, what's right, what's wrong. And initially we were trying to have, we were trying to say, how do we dramatize a story that maybe we've seen before, but in a unique way where we have a character that's, complicated and maybe she's not making the right decisions but she's doing what she thinks is best for herself she's not a bad person and kind of playing with the lines of right and wrong so you know he andrew very early on um he wanted me to play her and it was kind of no question for me i felt like it was the biggest opportunity i'd ever had in in my career to to be the lead in a film i'd done guest spots here or there I felt like at the time, I felt like I hadn't seen a story like this done in this way. So I was interested in, in playing her. So, so yeah, for me, it was very easy just to jump in and, and, you know, I have two kids too. And to tell the story of a mother doing everything for her children was really appealing to me, you know? Well, now that you mentioned that, you know, you, you do have kids, you're yeah. a mom, I mean, Anna, like you said, she was just trying to do whatever she could, maybe not making right. the right decisions, but what she thought, you know, yeah. was right for her and her right. daughter. Yes. In this situation, I mean, what would you have done? That's such a great question. Anna? I thought about that. I thought about that a lot. And especially recently, actually, you know, this is such a crazy time, um, this virus and you know, it's so, so, we get so used to it, but then sometimes I just kind of, I don't know if this is happening to you, but I'll just freeze and be like, 
this is crazy what's happening. We can't go outside, you know, it's just, so I start thinking about what if we were backed in a corner and what if, what if we had to be the ones to leave? Like, well, you know, I've had these questions in my mind when I was making the film, I thought, what would I do? What I kept coming back to was what wouldn't I do? So like, I, I, I come from a lot of privilege. My family is all here. Um, no matter what happens, like I'm going to be okay. And I have, my dad lives in Costa Rica. So I have basically two countries that I call home that I can go to. I, my kids are never going to starve. They're never, we're always going to have a place to go, even if we lost everything. So it's a hard place to put myself in. Cause I think this woman, you know, Anna is just, she doesn't have anybody at this point in her life. It's just her and her daughter. So I think, what would I do? Like if I knew that I had no choices, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't think I would be caring as much about right and wrong in those moments if it comes to my kids and how to set them up to be successful, especially if nobody gets hurt. Then, then those are the kind of the muddying of the lies. Like I'm not really hurting anyone. I think that's what she, how she justified some of her choices. No one's really getting hurt. And, you know, we tried everything else. So I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a hard thing to, hard place to put myself in for sure. Definitely. Um, so this film did not have like a long extent of dialogue. Yeah. Oh yeah. But the film had so much emotion in it. Yeah. What's the struggle in playing a character like that and in a film where it's like you have to really portray that emotion for the viewer to feel how the, your, the character's feeling? Yeah, that, that was, um, I mean, it was kind of a, it was kind of a gift in a lot of ways because um, the, the girl who plays Izzy is actually my niece. Uh, her name is Izzy as well. And she had never been in a film before in her life. This is her first time doing anything like this. So, you know, I kind of already felt um, a lot of that. I already felt very protective of her and kind of was already in that space. In some ways, there's a lot of freedom. I don't feel like that the dialogue is even necessary. And a lot of times I feel like there's so many moments where people speak when when maybe in real life, they're not going to be having these conflicts. Like mothers and daughters don't get in the car and say, you know, I love you so much, mom. I love you too, daughter. I mean, you know, you don't really talk like that as often, right? You, it's, it's communicated in the moments and like making you dinner and like hugging you and loving you. These are the ways that we communicate usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom and I say, I love you a lot, actually, but, but you know, not everybody. So I, for me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So for me, it was, it was, it was almost easier because I was able to just, um, I just felt like she was a woman who really didn't say a lot. She was a woman like my mother. My mother was a single mother, raised four kids. And she just like put her head down and got the job done. Like whatever she needed to do, she did. And I kind of felt like, like, you know, Anna was a lot like that. She was just like this type of woman who just handles her business. And so a lot really doesn't need to be said. You know, and in those painful moments, you know, how do you explain this to your daughter? How do you explain that you're not going to be with her anymore? How do you, these are real things people are dealing with in real life. How do I, how do I have the, these kinds of conversations? Sometimes there are no words. So, yeah. So it's funny because you talk about, you, you know, how privileged you are. And after I watched the film, I was watching with my boyfriend and I said, I've been super privileged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I said that. I was just like, wow, like a lot of people have it tough out there. Yeah. I mean, and not just that. I mean, Izzy at least is in this film. She's 18. She's turning 18. Imagine having to leave a four-year-old or a five-year-old. Imagine having to be separated. I mean, I think about this daily and it's agonizing to be separated from your children, to, to be somebody who pays taxes and is doing everything you're supposed to be doing, supposed to be, and then suddenly you're um, criminalized just at the whim of whoever happens to be, you know, on the microphone that day, right? Like, I just think about my own children. My, I have a six-year-old and an eight-year-old, and 
I mean, the reality that people are facing having to be ripped away from their kids is just, it's devastating. And so you can't help but think of that privilege. I, I think about it and, you know, I'm thinking about it a lot more now as I get older because, you know, growing up and coming up in the industry too, I always felt like, well, I'm Latina and I have so many things stacked against me and I'm fighting this fight. And, but it's true. You, ha I have to acknowledge that, like, I have had a lot of opportunity and just the simple fact that I know my kids will never go hungry. Mm -hmm. I mean, that right there is more than a lot of people have. So yeah, the privilege part of it is hard to reconcile, but it's, but it's important, you know? Yeah. So what do you hope, there's a lot of Annas, there's a lot of Izzy's out there. What do you yeah. hope they can take from the film? And then, yeah, time? you know, I just hope for me, I hope that, and one of the things that I loved about her was that she was, you don't get to see a lot of complicated women characters, um, least of all complicated, you know, um, women of color. It's usually like, a, you know, she's like a saint and there's nothing, you know, she's just like, or she's like, you know, like in Roma, she's the maid and she takes care of your children. And it's like there's it's these black and white pictures of women. So for me, seeing um, Anna was just like a complicated, interesting woman. And men get to have complicated, interesting characters all over the place. You know, you see lots of men who are struggling with the choices they're making in their life. And so for me, I think what I hope people will see is representation like this looks familiar. This is not, a, I hope, this is not a caricature. This is a, an actual living, breathing person. And Izzy is an actual living, breathing person. And we can see ourselves represented in a way. And, you know, the film ends on a hopeful, on a hopeful note, even though it's a kind of a heartbreaking note with Izzy's last moment. There is a, a moment of hope and a feeling of we can still be great. We can still you know, see the humanity in each other. So I'm hoping that that resonates. And then moving forward past roles like this, where we can start to see ourselves represented in all kinds of different ways, where we're seeing ourselves as doctors and lawyers and in, in all kinds of different fields and positions. And I just think it's about seeing yourself represented. I think that does a lot, you know? Yeah. So, so I did have a question, and I don't know if maybe I missed it in the film, but no. was it that Anna had to leave because of her legal processing temporary leave, or was it like a permanent type of leave? No, it was, so So w what we were playing with, and this was like a part of um, the kind of the, the inspiration for it, was an actual story of a mother who um, who had been, she had, she was undocumented, but she had been regularly checking in which was, you know, in the past administration was, you know, you check in, you let them know what you're doing, and it's like, okay, you can stay, that kind of thing. Yeah. And so she had been regularly doing that. So the idea he was playing with, without being too explicit, was since now things had shifted, now her regular check-in, which is also what was happening, this happened to a woman that we were covering, they suddenly out of nowhere said, um, we're not going to reinstate you and you have to leave. And she had three children that are American born here. And so she ended up, this woman ended up taking up, um, she asked for sanctuary in a church and the church let her live there. Yes. Was that like in Chicago or something? Yes. Yes. yes it was, I remember that story. Yeah. And it was like crazy. I mean, that the, I, so that's kind of where the inspiration came from where he didn't want to be too explicit about saying it, but the idea was, I've been living here peacefully and doing what I'm supposed to do. And now out of nowhere, based on nothing, mm -hmm. you have to leave. And this is how long you have and just get your affairs in order. And then you have to go, that kind of thing. So, so it was intended to be permanent and he didn't want to do anything um, too explicit as to, you know, why she didn't want to go back or what her motivations were. So that was all stuff I did kind of privately trying to build the character. Why wouldn't she want to go? And, because most of us like really love our home countries and most of us if we're leaving or fleeing it's for a specific reason it's because right. something's going on and you know we have to leave or because we want something better or different you know so yeah that's a long answer to that question but yeah <laughs> that was no good. worries no worries i mean it was just a question because you hear the stories um yeah. so to start finalizing sure. i mean this was a really strong strong you know, story. 
what kind of stories are you looking for now? I mean, that yeah, will just I'll, give like a have like a real true meaning. Yeah, I I'm just really interested in exploring. Um, you talk about like the privilege of like I, I I'm really interested in exploring all the different you know layers and shades and positions and experiences you know my experience personally is so different from other people's experiences i mean I, I when we came back to the united states my mother was you need to learn english you need to learn english there was no spanish in the house so as a result my spanish really suffered and now i'm trying you know I'm, i've had to learn it as an adult or try to learn it as an adult so you live in that space of like i'm not latina enough and i'm not white enough i'm in the middle i'm you know that that place where you just can never feel like you quite need the aqui need the yeah you don't really fit yeah. anywhere yeah so i want to see uh, my hope is you know when things start opening up is seeing some more representation of all the different shades i mean there's just this beautiful tapestry of people from so many different countries so many different dialects so many different you know spaces so i think for me in the future i just want to see more of that and i would love to play more you know more characters like that that are that are authentic and that are not you know caricatures it'd be nice not to cry too maybe a comedy would be <laughs> maybe a romantic comedy who knows that's so funny you say that because I, I think I relate a lot to your upbringing because uh -huh. my parents, they moved into like a white community. Yeah, me too. So it was right away, like English, English, you know, and then yeah. I would end up being the one having to help and translate and everything growing yeah. up. So, yeah, my mom is very white presenting. My dad is not, but my mom and my one of my sisters, they look white. Like they really do. They're very light skinned. Mm -hmm. So yeah it's a you really assume you just don't really know where you fit in right you're just kind of like it's just a different world yeah yeah so yeah that, that that upbringing is another maybe there'll be stories about that you know about yes. how there's a show there's a show right now on uh one day at a time it's on i think it's on pop tv um gloria calderon uh, Kellett, she's the showrunner of it, and and there's a character on that show that is this young teenage girl. She's very, she's like very light skinned, and her grandmother's teaching her Spanish. Same kind of thing. She just never learned it, you know. So I love that. I love seeing that because so many of us have that experience where we're we don't really fit in with our family. We're talking to our grandmothers in English, and they're talking to us in Spanish. You know that whole thing, and yeah. it's like, yeah, it's a totally different experience. And I've only seen it represented once, really, once or twice. Well, so, yeah, great to see more. Definitely. And maybe you get to be a part of it. <laughs> great. <laughs> well, Probably thank you so it. much for your time. Um, it was a privilege speaking with you and look forward to seeing more projects of yours. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much for taking the time. You're welcome. Thank you.